Today on Dry Crow Studios, we do a high gain amp shootout between the Marshall DSL 100 HR and the Blackstar HT Stage 100 Mark II. So I would like to reiterate here that this is a high gain amp shootout. So you're not gonna hear any cleans, you're not gonna hear any like break up or like smooth jazz or light rock. It's all gonna be geared towards high gain and metal. Would also like to take the time to note that I made the odd decision to use an Ibanez TS9 in the boost setting for both amps and both sound samples. Uh, I actually did it by accident when I started recording the DSL 100 HR and then once I noticed it, I kind of a beat it and I thought, you know what, I'll keep it with the TS9. And then when I did the second recording, uh, I tried without and then tried with, and it just sounded better with the TS9. But I do have two sound samples today, the first of which is a more balanced EQ setting in drop C, and the second of which is a scooped setting, uh, which is a little louder, <laughs> louder than it should be, I would say, uh, and that is in drop B.
All right, so there you go. There are the two sound samples for the high gain amp shootout between the Marshall DSL100HR and the Blackstar HT Stage 100 Mark II. Now, I do want to kind of go over uh, what I've gained from doing a shootout like this. Um, and I'll first talk about the, the TS9, because the, the DSL100HR is not an amp that you would generally boost. You don't really need to. Uh, it reacts really well to it. However, um, I've gotten plenty of recordings in a high gain setting where there's not even a TS9 in the signal, um, or like in the chain, um, even in gate, like not engaged. <laughs> So it's, it's not an amp that you generally would um, use a TS9 for in a boost setting. The Blackstar, on the other hand, I find that it, it reacts better with it. Um, and at this point, like, I want, I want to say I own the Blackstar HT Stage 100 Mark II. I own all of the amps that you see on this channel and all the guitars that you see in this channel, I own. So... And I do really like the HT Stage 100. I feel that it's a great recording tool. Um, and it works at lower volumes. But when you start raising the volume of this amp, it kind of reacts like a um, solid state amp. In which most tube amps, when you start raising the volume, the EQ starts to breathe. Um, so they're a little, the EQ is a little more reactive and stuff like that. The HT Stage 100 in a high gain setting, when you start raising that volume, the EQ doesn't really change very much. And uh, it gets to a certain point where when you're moving the treble control um, without increasing the presence control, it just breaks up the signal even further, which is a little odd. Um, and it's, I'm going to come across like I'm poo-pooing on uh, the HT Stage 100. But do know that I really do enjoy owning that amp. And I use it more in um, as a, a, a tool for versatility uh, rather than like a, a tool for high gain. I would also like to note that the HT Stage 100 records really well. So um, you may actually find that re the recording, like going from the DSL100HR, which naturally has a little more high end and a little more low end, um, you may find that oh, there, you know, it took out some of that high end. That maybe if you're not, uh, if you don't like the high end uh, in some of your like high gain recordings, you might naturally gravitate towards the HT Stage 100. Um, that amp records really well, but again, uh, in the room, even in the headphones, especially in front of the amp, once you're starting to raise that volume, that's when uh, the question of is this actually a tube amp or is it a solid state amp comes into question. So again, you may hear in the recording uh, or in the recordings that the HT Stage 100, it's a little more um, mid-focused, high mid-focused than the DSL100HR, which is a little odd because it's a Marshall, right? Because you would think that there's, there'd be a lot more focus on the mid-range. Uh, but the DSL100HR, um, a lot of it uh, is focused towards the, the low end and the high end with the mids kind of um, being a, a secondary focus, I guess you would say. It's quite easy, though, to dial out some of that low end and dial out some of that high end if you don't like that um, and you can even increase the high end quite a bit uh, I generally try to keep my uh, treble setting from not going past like two o'clock um, I think that it, it kind of gets a little more a little too shrill at that point but again both amps are great choices uh, to own the uh, DSL100HR, um, I've been told that there can be uh, reliability issues depending on the board. Um, I, I own 34 amps, so that's not I, there's not going to be one amp that I own that is my like main amp. So I, I haven't put the DSL100HR through that much of a ringer to find out if that's going to be the case there. Um, and the AT, HT Stage 100, um, it, it, it has its uh, fan base, that's for sure, uh, and it definitely has its detractors. 
it's just one of those things if you're if you're going to buy um like if you're seeing the ht stage 100 mark ii at like a super super cheap price don't use this as a <laughs> this video as an example of what it sounds like in a high gain setting because again it records a lot better than it actually sounds in person um but if you're going to think about buying this because i bought this brand new make sure you go and play it don't just buy it blindly make sure you go and play it and play it at a loud volume you apologize slip them a five spot whatever you want to call it um but make sure that you're going to be happy with this amp because you could bring it home think that oh you know at a lower volume it sounded pretty good and then when you start raising that volume you might go okay this might be a solid state amp what's going on here so uh you can even be one of those goofballs that bring a, a second head to a b from one to the other so you can kind of do that type of comparison but if you see one of these cheap um play it loud if you see it in the store maybe at a used price or used try a couple of different heads and kind of a b it that way just to make sure that you're making the right decision because it's youtube it's there's a million and one different settings you can get out of these amps uh, and you're just going with what I enjoyed at the time while I was recording it. And I'm notorious for always changing my settings and never remembering what I use. Anyway, thanks for watching. I have a headache. I'm going to go lay down now.